Well, City Council meeting, uh, Tuesday, February 20th, 2018 at 7 p.m. Mr. Barber. Mayor Reynolds. Here. Mr. Lighty. Here. Mr. Lowry. Here. Mr. Shammy. Here. Mr. Cobb. Mr. Cook. Here. And Vice Mayor Lindsay. Here. Six members present. Fantastic. All right, we're going to have our invocation night by Brian Light at the Church of the Brothers. for this lovely day. It's been good. Thanks for sunshine. Thank you for warmth. And God, when we've been through the pits and life has been cold and dreary, man, we need a day like this. We pray, God, that we have many more days like this. Brighten our hopes, brighten our future, brighten our lives in your name. Amen. Amen. Mr. Shammy, you're abstaining. Mr. Cobb? Mr. Cook? Yes. That is 5 to 0. Now, we can move on to right. the next one. Council, action on the other two. So we have to do it? Mm -hmm. Anyone can do it. Okay, I'll uh, make a motion that uh, for special meeting for 2 one eighteen. Second. Mr. Lowry? Yes. You have a second? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Shammy? You can vote yes on this. You can vote on this. Yes. Okay. Mr. Cook? Yes. Mr. Lin Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lighty? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Six through. One more meeting, guys. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. Make a motion to accept uh, the minutes of regular scheduled council meeting of February 5th, 2018. Second. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lighty? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Six zero. Fantastic. Moving on to the city man uh, communication oops, communication to the city manager for Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of the public. I uh, would like to share with you the city manager's report. And we will start off with our report with our finance discussion with our finance director, Ms. Harris. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Mayor, Council, members of the public. The um, Financial report for the month of January. We took in for revenue for the month of January at $334,887.33. For the month of January, our total expenditures was $416,515.33. So that is also our year to date total. Again, revenue at $334,887.33. And our year-to-date expenditures is $416,515.33. I do have two notes that I put on my report. We will have two 
different dates at the fire station to help with anybody that needs assistance for their tax return. First date is Wednesday, March 7th from 3 to 6 p.m. The second date is Saturday, March 17th from 3 to 6 p.m. If there are any other dates or times that you would need assistance, you can contact our tax administrator, Vicki Taylor, at 845-9492, extension 15, and she'd be glad to try to set up a time uh, to get with you with any questions. Uh, general fund revenue for January is $99,008.92, and our expenditures in the general fund was $74,000. $116.56. The rest of the report is attached. I entertain any questions. Council, any questions for Ms. Harris? I would assume that when we're going to give them tax help, that's for the city tax only. For the city tax only, thank you. I, Clarifying that. There would be probably more people you could handle if you were going to do a federal. <laughs> Council, anything else? No. Thank you, Ms. Harris. You're welcome. And move that. Thank you, Ms. Harris. And moving along with the city manager report, our service discussion with our service director, Mr. Kiko. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Good evening, Mayor, members of Council, uh, citizens. I'd like to start off tonight with the service department. Uh, we've been consistently out pothole patching um, throughout the winter. The early part of this winter did uh, wreak havoc on our, some of our roads. Uh, we will definitely try to keep up with them. Uh, tree work will be scheduled as weather permits. We have gotten out and got a couple trees. Um, our chipper broke down and I think they got that back working. So um, we will be back on that if uh, the weather stays decent. Um, we are currently planning for spring projects. I've already approved some appropriate or spending or appropriations for um, various park stuff um, and you know things to get ready different things like that uh, 2018 various roads project uh, currently inspecting various streets to be included into this year's project um, I have to have a paper back into the Clark County Engineer's Office by the end of March with um, if we're going to go ahead and do that again this year but I almost, I'm pretty sure that's a definite Wastewater plant uh, influent building upgrade project. I'm um, working to finalize the construction estimates. I'm gathering some loan information, um, like between two and four years worth. Cost to preserve a higher ending fund balance in case we have an emergency. And I'm also working with engineers to design a part of the project. I just um, got an update that we're required to do a PTI, or what they call a permit to install for the wastewater department. Um, that uh, kind of popped up for us because initially we weren't going to have to do that, but now we are because they're, they're saying we're changing treatment. So that's going to be another, uh, from what they told me, two months um, additional for their review. Uh, local offices are not going to have an issue reviewing the PTI, but once you get to Columbus, they have right now, from what I understand, one wastewater person doing all the PTIs for the state of Ohio. So any wastewater project going through, there's one guy. They do have an intern that is assisting, and they're working on uh, employing others, but um, I guess it's a bad time to get a project through if you're looking for speed. Scarf Road Water Tower, uh, met with the gentleman today with uh, utility sales. He's taking the uh, documents back, get those signed. We are scheduled for a summer um, project. However, there are a couple um, towns right now that uh, may have some issues with a spring um, project for them. So if he can, he may move us to spring. The only time we have an issue with a spring project with the water tower is filling of the pool, which is mid-May. So, and that's usually because we have such much, so much water consumption in that day, day and a half. I told him, I said, I don't think right now uh, we may be able to move it to a spring. So you might get to see the project start earlier. Um, I can answer any questions on what's in the report or anything additional. If you have anything. Council, any questions? Can I come, please? Yes, sorry. Hey, Mr. Kick, how are you doing? Um, Fine. Just a couple of quick questions. On the uh, road repairs, and you know, you're building out certain streets you're looking at. I know in one of our work sessions we've talked in the budget about looking into the price of getting the blacktop out here. Did you, is that being checked into stuff? Um, this part hasn't yet. I got to work on getting the, the street portion, but um, I will. There will be an estimate involved in just so I can get this. If for some reason during the Clark County the project, if this is X amount of dollars and it can be done, I'll at least have that figure. Okay. And then second, the 
mean, curbs, I know we brought this up a couple different times, curbs up on Main Street that are just crumbling away and mm -hmm. really horrible. Realistically, what, when, and how is that going to get taken care of? Uh, up to the property owners to get the curb and gutter repair. I, right, I know that, but I know that we'd also mentioned it, I thought you said maybe five years out was when State Route 235 would get done, ballpark. Yeah, um, it'll be three to five years. Uh, that will be a resurfacing only where we're paying 20%. Uh, um, anything that is outside of that is 100% city funds if we want to redo the base. Okay, so in order to get those curbs taken care of, it's the property owners to do so, right? Yes. Do they need to contact the city to, because what I'm assuming is that's like a, you know, you get your curb and then it notches out to a concrete piece underneath the black box. Right? Correct. So wouldn't they have to go through the city in order to repair that because they're going to essentially be tearing up some of the road? Yes, there is a there is a permit um, to get to do curb and gutter and approach. Um, I can talk with uh, Mr. Bridge later on, uh, you know, about some avenues that we could look at if there's going to be a, a major, you know, bunch of business owners getting together to do a major project. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. You mind if I add to that? Go ahead. When we did the sidewalk repair program, I saw the planning director. We actually waived, it's a $20 permit fee, and what it is, there are standards, and it has those standards that you have to build for that. Um, so I'd be willing to, if a business owner wants to redo their curb, I will gladly with uh, either cut the fee in half or not charge them at all. So could we maybe put something together, just something simple like a you know, form or, or just a set of guidelines that we can present? It's, it's, already, it's already ready to go. Is it? It's on our, it's been on our website. Yep, it's application for sidewalk, curb, and gutter. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah. No problem. Council, anything else? We probably need to get Thank you. Okay, yeah. Ready to move on? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kiko. And moving on with the city manager's report, our um, fire discussion with our fire chief, Chief Crusty. Mayor, Council, Public. Uh, the month of January, the New Palau Fire Division responded to 60 EMS calls in the city, four in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to five related, fire related calls and one in Elizabeth Township. We had three EMS calls answered by mutual aid by Pike Town, Shippel, Bethel Park due to the Medic 52 on our response. We answered one, one mutual aid EMS call for Pike Township and two for Bethel Park. In the month of January, the division responded to two overdose calls. On the first, on the first of January, the fire division switched over to the Clark County Share, uh, Dispatching System and also went on to the March Radio System without any problems. This Saturday, uh, we'll be having our first open house from two to five to answer questions and to go over for the uh, levy in May. Uh, we're planning on having three open houses, one each month, February, March, and April, um, and to answer any questions for, for the public and also to be able to show them the equipment, show them the gear, show them what we're looking at. Fantastic. Council, any questions? Well, Chief, I just want to thank you so much. You're doing a great job. Uh, I know I missed this quite a bit, but I still remember the time before you when you took over when we would provide no mutual aid because we would get it all of ourselves because they'd have to come help us. So you're doing a fantastic job. So thank you. And moving on to the city manager report, our police discussion with our police uh, administrator, Sergeant Underwood. Thank you, city manager, mayor, council, and friends in the audience. Uh, New Corral deputies were dispatched to 61 calls. Assaults, we had one. Domestic violence, there were six. Theft, we had 10. Non injury crash, we had two. Injury crash, we had none. Citations, 14. Drug complaint one, overdoses three, and suicide attempted one. I want to point out that along with the nuclear law deputies working to solve crimes in the city, Clark County Sheriff's Department also assigns detectives to work on cases and do follow-ups. In January, detectives made arrests on several theft cases and solved a forgery case, along with solving a child endangering case where a small child had a fractured leg, and that wasn't the first fracture. 
So I'm glad that person is put away. On January 27th, 2018, at about 0115 hours, deputies were notified that Huber Heights police were involved in a pursuit heading into New Carlisle. Deputies Anderson and Gonzalez were working in New Carlisle and went to different locations to set up their stop sticks. Deputy Gonzalez was able to set his sticks up in the 500 block of North Main Street and was able to spike the vehicle. After flating the front tires, the vehicle continued back into Springfield and was followed by multiple agencies until it crashed. At the crash site, Deputy Gonzalez deployed his taser two times on the subject in the back seat, which allowed officers to take control of the subject, Adam G. Colwell. Mr. Colwell did have a loaded semi-automatic in his possession and was arrested on multiple charges. Actually, it fell off his lap when they drug him out. Uh, the driver, William Jackson, uh, was to be considered armed and dangerous and was also arrested on multiple charges. Both subjects had active arrest warrants on or for them. And we all know about the disaster to Miami Valley Grain Company and numerous agencies worked hard to open up the state route and keep the community safe during the cleanup. Almost immediately after the, the disaster, traffic and site seekers became a safety problem and deputies were called to work around the clock security. The security detail was handled through the Clark County Sheriff's Department and no money was used from New Carlisle. And as a reminder, please contact the Clark County, County Sheriff's Department at 937-328-2560 if you witness anything suspicious. Uh, this could be the phone call we need to solve crime. And that is the report for the police department. Council, any questions? Sorry. Sergeant Underwood, uh, with the warm weather coming around the corner, uh, are we going to be on schedule once uh, permanent weather hits? It's it allows the uh, deputies to get back on bike patrol? Yes, there's actually a bike school coming up uh, in about two months. Hopefully we can get all four of them certified. We currently have two, and they're anxious to get back out on the bikes. Um, I've been looking at some different bikes. Uh, hopefully we can purchase one or two. Okay. Thank you very much. Council, anything else? No. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Sergeant Underwood. And uh, finishing up the city manager report under informational items, online utility payments, uh, a massive hit. We've had great, great response to it, a lot of feedback from it. Um, I just do want to talk about something real quick. There are a multiple of third, what we call third party vendors out there that will actually take your money and pay your bill on your behalf and end up sending the city either electronic check or uh, send it directly to our bank account. One in particular out there is called Doxo. I'm not trying to name, but bash the particular company. Uh, but we've had a few of our residents actually set this up through Doxo. And months ago, before we even had online utility payments, we just discussed this at a council meeting as well, and it is that same company. So um, they will pay your bill. I'm not saying they won't do that, but what happens is we usually get your bill late. Um, and if it's not in our hands by shutoff date, unfortunately, we don't have the payment, and there's no way for us to get the payment until they send it to us. So we just want to make sure that everyone is going through our city website, website www.newcarlisle.net, and clicking the link that's on there. That will be credited um, uh, very uh, soon, uh, the next business day, if it's after 5, and we'll get notified uh, immediately if it's before 5. Please correct me if I'm wrong on that, Ms. Harris. Um, but again, if you go through this third party, vendor and they say we'll have that check there on the 14th we don't get it we don't have your payment so just again be sure you pay your bill through www.newcarlisle.net for seamless seamless transitions but again lots of our citizens love that we are very happy that it's in place premier health uh, mobile mammogram uh, will be friday february 23rd and that's from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. and that's at the Church of the Brethren. New uh, city website update. Uh, we did have a meeting set for tomorrow, but unfortunately their office is out with the flu, so we had to reschedule that for Tuesday the 27th. So I will have an update with council at the next meeting on that. Another project we are very excited to get rolling. Fire levy open house, I was, I was, I was uh, mentioned by our fire chief, Saturday, February 24th, 2 to 5 p.m. at the fire station. And next Monday, March 5th, is our yearly town hall meeting. Um, it, uh, the council meeting will start at 6.30 p.m. that day, and the town hall will start at 7 p.m. after the council meeting. And I do believe that's all I have for my city manager's report. I would be more than happy to entertain any questions. Council, any questions? Good. 
Mr. Bridge, are we getting a delinquent list or a stop service list from our trash hauler? Um, for in regards to people who haven't paid their bill? That's correct. No, we don't do that in-house. They take care of all billing for us. That's what I mean, mm -hmm. but are they sending you a list? No, I have not got a list. Does that not help us on uh, some of the trash that's piling up? Uh, I mean, it could, yeah. But uh, uh, the other kick side to this is if they don't have trash service by this point in time, they will be fined. Um, so that would create a ripple effect as well. Um, we'll have a code enforcement go out. You have a list of addresses that are have trash outside of them that you could supply me? No, no. I'm just wondering if our trash hauler has sent you any, any information in order to put us up on what's going on. Sure. Um, I'll reach out to them. Our account rep no longer works for them, and they're in the transition period. And I had a meeting with her probably about two weeks, three weeks ago. So let me reach out to her and find out what I can get for you. Council, anything else? No. All right. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Comments from members of the public? Does anyone have anything to say? Mr. Mills? Uh, Matthew Mills, 1103 Langdale Avenue, in the Carlisle, Ohio. Um, just a quick question regarding the fire levy, <clears throat> and maybe my question could be better directed at the um, work sessions that are coming up. I know that it looks like a grant was filed for for a new fire engine for $250,000, and that the city or the fire department will be on the hook for 5%. Is there any update to that? And then if that is approved, how does that affect the current levy? Can it be reduced? Is the full amount really required? Just looking for some feedback there. If the, if the levy passes and the grant passes, what's going to be done with the extra money? Or can it be returned to the citizens? Okay, we didn't put in a grant for a fire engine. We put in a grant for a medic. Apologize. Thank you. Uh, and it's uh, one of those things shot the guard if we get it or not. If we was to get it, what that would allow us to do would be looking at getting a fire engine sooner than having to wait three, five, three to four years to buy the engine. Because we would be responsible for 5% of the cost of the medic. So it would be in addition to, so currently right now you've got budgeted to purchase a new medic and not a new engine in the new level. Not, not well with the levy money as we, as we can that's where that levy money would go would go to purchase a new engine later on down the line not right the first thing the first piece of apparatus that needs to be purchased is a medic okay but like again as i said the as far as grants it's a shot in the dark so we may get it we may not okay so to, to reiterate if the grant is passed it will have no impact and no reduction in the income tax levy no okay thank you Property tax. Okay. Property tax. Thank you. Can I add to that? Yes, sir. Um, the grant application came well after the, the level, um, and we, we thought about that. The grants are shot in the dark. Um, I really hope we do get it. But it will save scenario A. We get the grant. The, the levy passes. We get the grant. We can't go back and say, let's refund this, this, this grant. I mean, the tax is not, we can't do it like that. What we would end up doing is just saving that cash because that levy is only five years. You know, what that will do is help us say, all right, well, we may be able to hold off for another year or two instead of renewing that levy right off the bat because of that additional money that we do have. Because what we'll end up doing is taking that money that we're going to put for the minute and we'll have Ms. Harris put in uh, Star Investment Ohio Banking. We'll get a nice return on it and then we'll, at the end of that five year levy period, we'll then analyze. And what's going to happen is hopefully we can say, all right, instead of renewing this right now, let's hold off a year or two. Use this money, see where, see where it gets us. So um, it, it, it was just the timing of it, it, just how it worked out the way it was. Sure, sure absolutely. Mr. So, uh, you got something for us. Yeah, yes. May I? Go ahead. <laughs> I need to uh, speak to council tonight from a citizen side of the house, so, because I need to get their opinion approval on something tonight. So um, I don't know if you need my clarity. 
A16 pump would drive. Um, let me start at the beginning of this. I've got a group of people who are wanting to work with a project on uh, with me that I think would be very, I think would be really neat for New Kalau and beneficial uh, in a couple different ways. Uh, we all know Dave McWhorter who posts all the historical photos of New Kalau, and I'm not as knowledgeable of all the details of New Kalau as he is with all the dates and history, but I know a lot of the key buildings in New Kalau. And a couple of years ago, he posted a photo of a building that I never knew existed. I knew we've had multiple gas stations. There was one, you know, Domino's. There was one where the uh, uh, Pizza Plus is and so on. But he posted a picture of a small gas station that was somewhere near Hensley Park, and it was a very tiny gas station. And it was just, when he posted it, I'd never seen it before, and I thought, man, it was just so neat to see. Uh, and it, and it's it kind of sparked an idea in my mind that Hensley Park has been in its location since, I think, 1962. Um, and it's always been just kind of a gravel square. You know, it, it never really gets used. People pull in, maybe have lunch, make a phone call. And then I think a few years ago, Mr. Pitco, was the Boy Scouts that donated uh, the shelter and, and put that up. I think they did a couple of them in the city. So with that being said, I'll pass these out. Um, they are drawings, and what you'll see on the front is a picture of the original gas station. And, and then the second photo is not one, it's not the same design. Okay, so I, you know, I threw the idea out there to rebuild this gas station uh, to the best of our knowledge off of that photo. So I contacted a few people I know that are familiar with buildings. Uh, Alec Ashball, he's the one I believe who, who put this building up that we're in. Uh, James Coburn, who's great with concrete. He's done the concrete work at the firehouse. Uh, neighbor Bruce Wayne, a couple other people that know these types of uh, skills that we'll need to do this. I had a meeting and kind of got a ballpark idea of what it would cost to rebuild this. And the thing is, is if we can get this done, I really think that we went out and measured it out. I think we've got it okay with DOT and, and the city as far as where we actually want it, as far as I know as of right now. Um, I think it would be great to have something like that in Nuclau, because over the years we've heard people say we've, we're seeing a lot of Nuclau's history go as far as it getting torn down and you know, things like that. Well, we can't rebuild Madison School, we can't rebuild the Troso store, but I think if we could add that building, if you look at it, that building's only, the actual building is 8 by 14, which is very small. Uh, we can tuck it right back there in the corner of Hensley Park, and, and, and we don't know the exact location of it, but we know, and Dave's trying to figure that part out, we can nail down exactly exactly what stretch and where that was. Uh, we want to rebuild that there and kind of give, you know, you know, maybe people a reason to actually pull into Hensley Park stop, maybe have a plaque out front that tells the history of the gas station, who owned it. Uh, it was a Ohio station, I think it was opened in the 30s and closed down in the late 50s, early 60s. Uh, so with Alec Ashball's uh, guest, he, he had some people donate their time and getting those plans put together. We're looking, we're, we're guessing, we haven't nailed it down yet because we, we still got to get approved for the city to help us with this, not help me anyway, get back to that. Um, we're thinking it's going to be around five to $6,000. And we're going to do the fundraising. We're going to do the building. We're going to do the concrete. It's going to be built to code, as you can see through the plans. I mean, it's it's going to be done right, and it's going to be built to last. Uh, for example, Al, Al called me the other day and said he's got a company that's going to donate uh, thick Lexan for the windows, because obviously we have our windows covered here because people break them. Lexan, you're not going to break unless you really, really are trying to do some damage. Uh, so we've got things that people are already wanting to donate money to get the project going. Uh, the question I have for the council is, there's no, there's no cost for the city as far as putting it up. We're going to take care of that through fundraising. The cost is going to be, once we put it up, we are essentially giving it to the city of New Kalau. It will be New Kalau's property. Thus, if it needs a coat of paint, the city of New Kalau is going to have to paint it. It will, I'm assuming, make the insurance hike a couple bucks, if I had to guess. Uh, it's no different than the uh, shelter house that the Boy Scouts put. It's a fixed structure, fixed structure, just like those have been put up. So I basically want council's opinion and thoughts on if we can move forward to this project. I think it would be great for the city. And uh, if you guys have any thoughts or opinions on it, Mr. Yes, <clears throat> 
this wouldn't be finished on the inside or people can't get in? No, it'll, I mean, it'll have a door. I mean, you could go in it, but I mean, it'll be locked at all times. Okay, but there'll be nothing inside, no shelving or anything? There might be a little counter. That, that's about it. Not, I mean, there's not going to be any, you know, cash registers and things like that. We, on the plans, there's two gas pumps on the front. We're going to get not not original restored ones, replicas, which are about a thousand dollars a piece. So. And no driveway, I hope. No, no driveway. People will be stopping to get gas. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Only because it is, you know, speedway or marathon, I guess. Right. It so might, gas will be cheaper there, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> some concrete pushed over, I think, from when they were filling a part of the bank in, that that's what he was saying. Yeah. Mr. Shannon, that's I think. Mr. Lowry, yeah, I, I, it's an awesome idea. Uh, what about, uh, would, it, would it be big enough to put some history of New Carlisle inside for people to see? Well, we, I had mentioned that to Howie or, and Randy, and you know, Randy said this is kind of ultimately your guys' decision. I mean, I could see tons of uses for this, really. I mean, it, it needs to be locked, just like the shelter house. You don't want anybody in there getting hurt and doing something they shouldn't be doing. Uh, you know, you could, you could, uh, yeah, I mean, well, originally I thought you could put those little, like, card order things, and you could put pamphlets of, like, the different businesses, organizations, festivals, you name it, and you call out, they stop in, oh, wow, there's uh, the, the Rotary Club, they got something going on, or, you know, whatever it may be. Um, you, I don't know if we want to open it up to as far as the city letting people, you know, I, I could really see the Girl Scouts going in and saying, hey, we're going to be at the gas station selling cookies out of it for the day. I mean, it'd be a neat little place to do stuff like that, but, you know, then you start getting the liability. Right now, I'm just focused on the building and the historical relation to it in Nukala. I know it's not a huge piece like the Trosa store in Madison, but it's still a little piece, and I, I think it would attract people to that park that's always been pretty much empty. So I have a quick question for you. So we have two postcards, and this is the original. That's the original. I tried to find one that's okay. similar design. So I was, I was, my question was, are you going to no. build that attached onto the? No. Okay. No, we're going to build it exactly to those plans, which is exactly like the black and white photo. I was just trying to get a color photo for you to, okay. to see that it's not going to look like a run down you know, shack or something. It's going to have nice color pop. Uh, Bruce Eggleston is, is said, thrilled to help work on it with signs and get the retro design of the building. So. Good. Uh, then my, uh, one last question that I'm asking. Uh, what will, have, will the Boy Scouts uh, shelter stand? Yes, it'll stay. Okay. From where we're, we're, and I got some information from Howie, if you're facing the gravel lot for Main Street, it'll be to the very far left of that lot and back up against the, the not down the bank, but it'll be up against the bank awesome. and give us 15 feet clearance from the road. Awesome. Fantastic. So the, the one hurdle is, and I know I mentioned this to you, Howie, it's not a big hurdle, but if we put it there, I would like to extend the, you know, the gravel over for the amount of feet we took for the, for the uh, building. And there's a pole there for dp &L. It's not an electric line. It's just giving support to another line. I don't know if they can move that and re-angle it, but uh, you know, we'll, get, we'll deal with that if, uh, if we get to that point. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, my last question is, do you guys have a, uh, something ready to get so we can donate? No, not yet. I didn't want to get too deep into it. I didn't want to waste anybody's time or anything like that. I know Al's got a, he's got a lot of good ideas. I guess he does all gross and does fundraisers with that. So uh, we're, we'll look at a couple different ideas and, and have a meeting with our group. So that's a council. Anything else? Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a good idea. I, I, you know, I'm old enough to remember the station. Uh, probably pump gas at somebody. The, uh, the one thing I would be interested in knowing, and maybe Mr. Bridge could look into it, because we'd have to insure this building as, as, being, as being city property to find out what the insurance cost would be for this, and, and also you know, liability and that for people being there. And I don't think it would take a lot of maintenance to, to maintain something like this. Again, it could be part of, you know, uh, since it's in the park, it probably could fall under the uh, park and uh, rec board to, to uh, if the unions or anybody complained about it, to keep the, the opinion up on it with these colors. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, it's just a suggestion, Bill. I think it's an awesome idea. One thing, Bill, I told Randy, and that was the instant, you know, and he's, which is good. He's always looking out for the dog. I can't imagine raising our interest too much. I mean, I think we've got three of the Boy Scout shelters total that they built, and those combined is getting bigger than what our building is going to be. So um, the other thing was maintenance. Yes, you know, our city workers are already overworked as it is. That means if it needs a coat of paint in 10 years, they would have to do it. But I told him as long as I'm not in a wheelchair, just like just like you guys painted the parks on, I'm willing to paint it and do whatever needs done. Um, and what we'd also like to do is when we do the fundraising, let's just say for conversation's sake, it's 6000 to, to build it and be complete. I'd like to try and raise an extra couple grand and give it to the city and say, okay, now you've got a two grand buffer for paint, whatever you may need down the road. And, and, and that was going to be another question. Do you have any estimates what it will cost to build this yet? No, Al looked at it. He was guessing around, like I said, somewhere in the four to six range, but that was just looking at it. And, um, you know, he said once we got, you know, we don't want to get too far into this, and then you guys tell us no, which, you know. Uh, you know. I, I'm going to add to that, if so, you don't mind. So, um, you know. Yeah. Yes, Rich. Thank you. When we first talked about this, and we had the conversation on the phone, I didn't know you were going to donate it to the city. Right. So I thought it was going to be owned by your private organization. That's when I said you're going to need council approval because at that point in time we thought it was city property, and you would have to give their they would have to give their approval if they're going to donate any land to any organization. That's we can't say that. However, we have found out one: the city does not own that property. Actually, ODOT does. Still, we have a park on it. It's in a right of way. Um, so, um, okay. you don't need council's approval. Just need it, state's it, approval. Yeah, I mean, I think I think it's good that you're bringing them in, but I, my city need council approval based off of my understanding that it was going to be owned by your organization. No, no, no. We were and when you said it's just like the show. Just like the, the show. Yeah, we just got to make sure ODOT's going to be okay with it, which we've already tackled that with ODOT. Right. And then my concern is money. Um, other than that, I think it's a great idea. I think it'd be a nice little addition. Um, but and Al, where at with it? Oh, I apologize. Oh no, no. I just wanted to clear it up that the council <laughs> approval was under the assumption that you guys are going to retain ownership of it. No, no. We, gotcha. we're, we're, it's kind of like Ethan said, giving it to sure. be a park, 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 yep. park. Um, and like I said earlier, I want to stress this. I don't know how many of you know Al Cashball, but you know he, this isn't going to be thrown together and look all shabby. Uh, he, you know, on, the, on that photo, it looks like the siding is wood. I forget what he called it. it it's, it's something that looks the same, but it's actually cement siding. He said, so you aren't going to have kids carving their name into it as easily if that was a problem, or they're not going to set it on fire because the exterior will be technically cement, even though it'll look like wood, you know. So he's thinking long term, you know, the roof's going to be metal. It, it should last a long time. Awesome. Uh, Mr. Light had something, sorry. Well, I feel much better about it since we technically don't own that area. It goes for it. Um, no, but uh, I do appreciate, you know, you doing this, and I'm thrilled that Mr. Ashball and Mr. Eagleson and Mr. Coburn are involved. Those are three solid people, so you know it's going to be done right. Um, I just wanted to say I'm in full support, and now I'm even more in support of it, seeing how it's really not going to affect us that much. So thanks for putting this together. Thank you. Thank you. Council, anything else? All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Scott. Thank you. Maybe one more you. Yeah. yeah, if you want. I'll consult with the insurance, and I'll give council an update once we hear back. Fantastic. So then I'm guessing you just follow up with the state to follow up with the state to the property? I'm sorry. But, uh, oh, we were we we already got ODOT. We're, we're good to go on. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Just make sure we're moving it forward. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, Mr. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. the, uh, since the state owns that property, uh, they, they, they were not aware of it either. Let's <laughs> say, why are we paying insurance on state property? <laughs> We okay. still have to, I mean, we have a shelter there. We have so, to. So if the state wanted to, they could come back and just rip everything down and, and take the curb out of the road and make um, it longer. How we really done with that? I don't think they'll do that. I think we got to stay out of their clear zone, yeah. which is 15, 15 feet. feet 15 feet. I have a so. That's, that's awesome. They but they might frown upon, like, Girl Scout cookies being sold there because that will cause a traffic jam on five, uh, State Route 235 there. So other than that. shooting for as far as the design and just I wanted a color photo on there
there so you can kind of see the actual like vintage look we're going for. It'll it'll be colorful and it'll pop like that. I just thought the exact same building structure. Yeah. Mr. Clark. I was just curious, how many, how, how many parking spaces are already there? Six, two? maybe four. Okay, that's that. I just wondered who what parks are. Right. Yeah, that's true. If you put yeah. three trucks in there, you know, nobody else is going to park. Never really stops at it. I think this will actually bring people to the park and at least enjoy it for what it is. It's a little tiny thing, but it still offers great, you know, um, places to sit and if there's no trees on our leaves, you can see down in the valley, see the creek and all that stuff. So, great. Awesome. Fantastic. All right. Mr. Yep. Thank you right. very much. Okay. Can I hear a fourth? There are none tonight. And then this is Burner, your section. All right. No resolutions. We have our ordinance 18 03. It's introduction tonight. Public hearing in action on March 5th, 2018. An ordinance to establish appropriations for current expenses and other expenditures of the city of New Carlisle, state of Ohio, during the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2018. Would you like to push on to other business now? Okay. Yes, yeah, we don't have to do anything, do we? Yeah. Okay, other business. Congressman Warren Davidson holds his mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1.30 p.m. until 2 p.m. Um, executive session, none. All right, council. Excuse Mr. Cobb. Yep. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to excuse Councilman Cobb. Second. <laughs> How's he doing? Do we have an update? No, I'm just yet. Oh, well, I guess it might be on day. Mr. Cook? Let's save it for after the meeting just yeah. so it's on. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I shouldn't have thought about that before I asked myself. Any discussion? Nope. There you go. Mrs. Garner. Um, just read the rest of that. All right, our next regular meeting for the City Council will be Monday, March 5th, 2018. It will start at 6.30 p.m. Um, the Town Hall meeting will begin at 7 p.m. following that meeting on March 5th. Right here at the Smith Park Show House. Yes, all right, so Vice Mayor Lindsay, second, yes. correct? Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Excuse me, Mr. Mr. Lighting. Yes. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. All right. Anything else? Council? The business? Okay. Hearing none. Mr. Mayor, I think we adjourn. We are adjourned.